A great pair of jeans is a wardrobe essential, but many of us find shopping for the perfect pair of jeans an absolute nightmare. In this video, I'm going to tell you why and share 10 common mistakes that we all often make when it comes to shopping for jeans. Hi, I'm Leonie and welcome back to my channel. I recently ran a competition over on Instagram to win a day shopping with me to find the perfect pair of jeans. To make it possible, I teamed up with Toyota New Zealand and like the perfect pair of jeans, the Toyota Corolla has also stood the test of time. So I thought you might like to see what my competition winner Jackie and I got up to when we hit the shops to find her the perfect pair of jeans. And while I'm at it, I wanted to share some of my top tips with you too. So here are the 10 common mistakes to avoid when you're out searching for a perfect pair of jeans. Now, trust your instincts because your initial reaction when you try on a pair of jeans is 99.9% .9 right. But often we have to talk ourselves into a pair of jeans. We'll walk out of the change room, they don't feel right, but we try and talk ourselves into them because they're in fashion, or perhaps even the shop assistant is telling us that they look amazing. But if you are having to do this, then it's highly likely that those jeans are not right today and they will never be right for you. The size and the placement of the pocket on the jeans is a big factor in how your jeans will actually look on you. Here are a few things to remember when it comes to pocket size and placement. The key to a really great fitting pair of jeans is in the rise. The rise is basically just the length of the jean from the waistband to the crotch area. And the rise determines where the jean sits in relation to your waist. So the higher the rise jean, the, the higher it will sit above your waist and you get it. The lower the rise, the lower it will sit. Now my competition winner was really petite and the key with a petite figure is to steer clear of any extremes when it comes to jeans. So nothing too high rise, but equally nothing too low rise as well. It's about finding that middle ground and steering clear of extremes. A jean that's either too high rise or too low rise will completely throw up the balance of a petite body type. Jean sizing differs so much, just like any other fashion item. All brands are going to fit you differently. Now, if you find yourself in a store and you're not sure which sizes to take into the changing room with you, then this simple trick of measuring the waistband of the jeans around your neck will work every time. I know it sounds crazy, but the measurement of your waist is approximately the same as the measurement around your neck. So if you're really not sure which size to take in, just whip the jeans around your neck. I know it looks a little silly, but it does work and it will help you save a bit of time and it makes it easier for you to take in sizes that will actually work. One of the worst things that can happen when you're looking for a pair of jeans or trying on jeans is trying on a pair and you get the dreaded camel toe. It happens and the reason it happens is because we often make what I call the crotch mistake. And this quite simply is choosing a pair of jeans where the space between the zipper ending and the crotch is too long. So what this does is it draws the eye to that area and just emphasizes it. And that's not where you want the emphasis of your jeans to be. I just wanted to jump in here at this point and also say a huge thank you to Toyota for sponsoring this video. This car is amazing. It's actually a self-charging petrol slash electric car which is not only uber cool, but it's also kinder on the planet, which was a big bonus for me. It also has some super high-tech features, which I've come to love this week, including 
a pre-crash system, which is basically an alarm that sounds when you're anywhere near or too close to a pedestrian or a cyclist. And it also sounds if you drift across the center line, which I did a couple of times this week and didn't realize how often I did that. But the real upside and a huge plus is that it's as quiet as a mouse. We all know that denim comes in every imaginable wash these days, but if your aim is to look slimmer and leaner, then definitely opt for a darker denim. I'd even go out on a limb and say that everyone should own a pair of black skinny jeans. They're a great wardrobe staple and can be dressed up, worn more casually, and they're a perfect go-to pant. You also have to be really aware of the wash on different jeans. Now a lot of jeans these days have that lighter, more sort of distressed panel that runs down the center of the legs. This is always really flattering because what it does is it draws the eye down the body and tends to give the illusion of length. But I have seen these washes where they actually finish at the knee and all this does is it cuts your legs in half and it just gives the illusion of your legs being shorter. So everything needs to be creating that illusion of length and an unbroken line to give the most flattering look. So when you're looking for a pair of distressed denim jeans where the wash is lighter and faded in areas, just be really mindful of what that wash is doing. You want it to elongate, so you want it to be long and lean, not washing and stopping at places like your knee, which will really just cut you in half and it's never flattering. If you're going to the trouble to try on lots of pairs of jeans, I also think it's worth spending a little bit more money. What you will get is a better fit and you'll also get longevity as well. The denim, the quality of the, the cotton and the elastin that's being used is better so they're going to last longer. They're also going to keep their shape longer and generally they just look and fit better. So investing a little bit more money and I don't mean spending a fortune and investing in designer label jeans, but just spend as much as you can because you will get a better pair of jeans and you'll be much happier with them in the long run. We often think that denim jeans are super hard wearing, but they are generally not as hardy as we tend to think. Most jeans these days have elastin in them. We all tend to like stretch jeans because they're super comfortable. But what happens if we put the jeans in a hot dryer, the elastin, which is a little bit like a plastic fiber, tends to melt. And that's why your jeans lose their elasticity and they'll be tight and nice when you put them on initially, but then they'll stretch out after that first couple of hours of wear. And often the reason this happens is because you've put them in a hot dryer and that elastin just hasn't stood up to, to the punishment that the dryer has given it. So essentially, you do need to look after your jeans and avoid putting them in a super hot dryer. It's also important to remember that we do need to break the rules and I've tried not to put too many rules into this video because I think we get so caught up on what we can and can't do in fashion that we block ourselves off to a whole lot of potential possibilities. A classic was when Jackie and I went shopping for her jeans. As a petite frame, it's generally harder to wear boyfriend jeans. They tend to swamp you and make a petite frame look shorter. But we tried on a couple of pairs because Jackie was keen to see if she could fit some boyfriend jeans. It's a style that she'd always wanted to wear. And we did find her a pair that not only looked great, they fitted amazingly well, and they were also really flattering on her petite frame. So the moral of the story is never say never, and don't be put off by hard and fast fashion rules.
Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel for more and I look forward to catching you in the next one. Bye for now.